video is brought to you by Dr. Borat. Please press on the subscribe button and the bell icon. Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, Abhijit Barai. So in this uh, video, we are going to show you uh, cardio one way bypass. Uh, so it's a very basic uh, video on the uh, animation to give you some rough idea about uh, the various aspects of the cardio pulmonary bypass. With me, I have uh, Becky, who has got some really good uh, knowledge and experience in the cardio pulmonary bypass. So she, she's going to help me in uh, uh, preparing the presentation. Hello, Becky. Nice to see you here. Hello, everyone. I am Becky. I am very excited to be here. Over the next few minutes, we are going to show you some awesome animations about the cardiopulmonary bypass. Hope you like it. I know how amazing you are. Please press on the subscribe button below and do not forget to click on the bell icon to get regular updates. We will bring to you new exciting videos regularly for your education and entertainment. If you have any burning questions or awesome ideas, please write in the comments section below and we will get back to you as soon as we can. I can assure you that the next few minutes will be fantastic. I will be with you till the end of the video. Let's start, shall we? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction, Becky. Um, yeah, so let's start. Um, now, uh, at first, uh, I'm, I'm, let me make it absolutely clear that this is not a full detailed explanation or description of cardiopulmonary bypass. So what we'll do is we'll show you some animations. We'll explain what it is and how what are the different components, how it is performed, and um, how to uh, manage it preoperatively. And of course, we'll talk about a little bit about the complications. But again, this is not a very detailed video. This is just to give you some rough idea. So uh, at the top of the video, as you can see, this is the heart. This is the right side of the heart, which is blue, which contains deoxygenated blood. So you have got the uh, superior vena cava, which is carrying blood from the heart, from the head, neck, and upper limb. And we've got the inferior vena cava, which carries the blood from the rest of the body. This is the right atrium, the right ventricle is here. This is the pulmonary trunk, the right principal bronchus, left principal bronchus. So this blue uh, area of the heart that is containing deoxygenated blood, this goes to the lungs, gets some oxygen, and it gets uh, uh, the red blood, which uh, then is pumped to the aorta from the left ventricle. And then from the aorta, this blood goes to the rest of the body, to the brain, uh, to the heart itself, to the um, to the intestines, to the kidneys, and to the limbs, so we can survive. Now, what happens in case of the cardiopulmonary bypass is that we take over the function of the heart and the lungs. So the patient can survive four to six hours or even longer without the heart or the lungs as the surgeons are doing the operation. So that is all about cardiopulmonary bypass. Now, in this cardiopulmonary bypass, uh, uh, there are some components. So this uh, blue thing, this is called the reservoir. And then there is a pump which makes sure that the blood is uh, transported in a certain direction. There is an oxygenator with uh, the heat exchanger along with it. And there are a lot of tubes and there is cardiopelagic component, the vent and uh, the suction device and a lot of other things. But as I mentioned, this is a very simplified way of uh, talking about it. So at first, what we, we do is uh, take the blood from the right side of the heart from the superior vena cava or an inferior vena cava. And this is deoxygenated blood. So this blood is then taken to a component called the reservoir. Uh, from the reservoir, the blood is uh, then taken to uh, a pump system so that this blood can then go to the oxygenator. And this is unidirectional. The blood always goes from the reservoir to the oxygenator, not the other way around. Now, as you can realize that this is oxygenator and its function is to oxygenate the blood. So on, uh, on one side, the oxygen is add, added to the blood and the carbon dioxide is removed from the blood. And there is a whole lot of other complicated machine on the right side corner. One important part of this oxygenator is to make sure that the temperature is optimized. So there is a heat exchange mechanism there so that the temperature of this oxygenated blood is optimized. If the blood is cold, it gets hypercoagulable and it can get clotted. And once that all is done, one oxygen is added, carbon dioxide is removed, and the temperature is optimized, this oxygenated blood is then transferred to the aorta. At this point, um, the surgeon uh, puts a clump there in the ascending aorta or arch of the aorta. And uh, proximal to the clump, 
some of this blood can be added in the form of cardioplegic system. Now, cardioplegic system is during the, during the operation, the surgeons make sure that the heart do not move or it does not contract. If the heart contracts, then the surgery becomes difficult. That is why we are using the cardiopulmonary bypass in the first place. Now, there are different ways of uh, keeping the heart asystolic. That is what you call cardioplegic system. So some of the blood can be taken uh, to the cardioplegic system and added to it. Sometimes uh, the Hartman solution, one liter added with 20 millimole of potassium chloride, 16 millimole of magnesium, and some procaine can be added to do the cardioplegia. So there are different ways of doing cardioplegia. One way is to use the blood. Now, obviously, this is uh, the very basic form of the uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. During the surgery, there may be some bleeding, and the surgeons use a suction device to take the blood off. And that blood can be added to this reservoir and back to the oxygenator and reused uh, to, to push into the uh, ascending aorta or the arch of the aorta, uh, distal to the thumb. Um, Similarly, there may be some uh, uh, other blood that can be take, that can be out, and that blood also goes to the reservoir. So uh, this is a very complicated process. It takes several hours to do this entire operation, and this is uh, beyond the scope of this animation or this presentation to give you the details uh, about the cardiopulmonary bypass. There, is, there will be some another video here I will uh, explain in about about the briefing of this cardiopulmonary bypass. So this is very brief thing about cardiopulmonary bypass. So let me summarize again. We are taking the deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, putting to the reservoir. This blood is then transported to the oxygenator and the function of the oxygenator is to add oxygen, remove carbon dioxide and optimize the temperature. Once that is done, this oxygenated blood is then pumped uh, into the uh, into the aorta and that oxygenated blood then is transferred to the rest of the body. So your brain, your kidneys, your limbs, your intestines, everything gets the blood. But our main target is the vital organs. That is the heart, the brain, and the kidneys. So this is, this is the basic, very basic uh, animation about the uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. And um, yeah, so Becky, could you please uh, summarize everything to um, us again, please? Thank you. Okay, let's wrap up now. So, essentially, the cardiopulmonary bypass is to temporarily taking over the function of the heart and lungs. Absolutely. It is also called the pump. Mm -hmm. It has various components. The deoxygenated blood is taken from the right side of the heart or superior or inferior vena cava. This blood is transferred to a component called the reservoir. The venous or deoxygenated blood is then carried to the component called the oxygenator. The function of the oxygenator is to add oxygen to the blood and remove carbon dioxide from it. The oxygenator also plays an important role in the temperature control of the blood. This oxygenated blood is then pumped back into the aorta which is then carried to the rest of the body. This is the very simplified way of describing a cardiopulmonary bypass. There are a lot of additional things to it. You can take the oxygenated blood from the oxygenator and add it to the cardioplegic system to keep the heart asystolic while the surgeon is doing the surgery. In addition, the suctioned blood is added to the reservoir which ultimately is added to the oxygenator and then it is transfused back into the aorta. Anyway, it is a very complicated process. Completely agree with you. It's a very complicated process and this is beyond the scope of this uh, simple presentation. So if somebody wants to have a very uh, simplified understanding of cardiopulmonary bypass, this is it. All right. So let's uh, quickly uh, summarize. So obviously during this entire process, the <clears throat> anesthetic team is making sure that the patient um, is optimized. Um, and um, the temperature control is very important. As we have mentioned, if the blood is cold, then it... Uh, it, it, it gets clotted, it's not very good. So the function of the reservoir is obviously to take the blood of the uh, of the uh, uh, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. And oxygenator is very important. It's obviously its function is to add oxygen, remove carbon dioxide, and making sure that the temperature is optimized. So that's in summary of the cardiopulmonary bypass. A very good summary is there in Oxford Handbook of Anesthesia, uh, and up to date has got very good uh, detailed articles. Wikipedia has got some uh, good uh, reference as well. 
All right. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please um, write below or contact us and we'll be back to you as soon as we can. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Becky, for a very nice summary. We really like that. <laughs> okay, folks. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you have enjoyed the video. You are so awesome. If you find it useful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and share it with others. Please write comments below the video. For every comment that you write, positive or negative, I will personally give a cookie to my cat Lucy. <laughs> I promise I will do. Okay, if you great. have any Thank burning you. questions, constructive suggestions or some awesome ideas, please get in touch. We would love to hear from you. Your comments and suggestions are very important to us. You can contact us through email, Twitter or Dr. Barai's webpage. Thanks once again. See you soon. Bye for now. Thanks, Becky. That was a very good conclusion. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, bye for now. Okay, see you later.